that I've got the Aspect 230 all wired up. We're going to fire it up and do a brief overview and walkthrough of the controls. And then we'll dive in and do some stainless steel TIG welding. So first and foremost here, we're going to fire this thing up. And the switch is actually on the back side. And it's now ready to weld. So you can see it's a very fast startup procedure. The fan goes up to full speed and then comes right back down. And they say that once this green light goes from blink blinking to steady green, that means you're ready. So definitely a lot quicker than some of the other welders I've used. So on the front of the machine here, You've got your ground, your positive for your torch, your foot pedals here, and then this is a 15 volt DC output to power up a wireless amp troll foot pedal. On the front here, I'll give you a brief rundown of all these switches. Here's your polarity. So you have DC and AC. Next you have high frequency start, touch start, and then your two stick welding functions. Next we have a two step and a four step. So you can basically, it's like a trigger lock on a MIG welder. If you go to the four step, you press down on the pedal and let up and that starts the welding arc. And then to end it, you press down on the pedal and let up again. We're going to stay with just the two-step. And then last, you can't access the AC wave shape on the bottom unless you're in AC mode. And that lets us go in and adjust a bunch of settings for AC. But today we're just going to be going over the DC. We're going to be welding some stainless steel. And so to start out, really, if we're not pulsing, this is our only control, just setting our amperage. Now you can set up a memory uh, for a program. And so I actually have a couple programs set up in here now. So if I toggle this button, it goes to memory set. If I want to save a program, then memory recall. And I'll hold this down for three seconds, and it'll pull up my my welding procedure. Now the thing I don't like about this is when I press this button it automatically goes to saving a program first and then it goes to recall and the majority of the time I'm obviously going to be recalling my program so I like the recall to come up first because I have a feeling I'm going to accidentally save over a program at some point in time. Here we have the welding process outlined and all these little parts will light up. If we press this select button, it'll take us through it. Right now, the amperage is illuminated, and that's displayed here. So the first time we press this, it'll go to our ending amperage. So that's the lowest amperage that the welder will put out before it terminates the arc. So you can bump that up. If you want to end your arc at 10 amps, but factory it's set all the way down to 2. So this unit can actually do 2 to 230 amps. So if we keep going through, we get our post flow, we can set this to auto, or you can set it anywhere you want, all the way up to 1 minute. So we'll leave that on auto. Then we'll go through, here's our pre-flow, this is set at a half second. You can turn it off, there's no automatic feature, it's just set at a half second from the factory. Then your starting amperage is when you first hit the pedal, it'll start out at 10 amps. You can set it all the way down to 2. And then you go back to your max amperage. Now we'll get into the pulsing 
controls. So this button here turns pulsing on and this will illuminate telling you that pulse is on. And now when we go through and press our select button, we'll get into these three features here. So here's your peak, here's your frequency, and here's your background. Now before you start your first arc of the day, you're going to want to just tap your pedal and get that gas purged through the torch line. There we got that going. Now I'll be honest, I've never tried recording a weld before, so I don't know how well this is going to come out. Um, you can actually hear that gas flowing. That flowed for quite a while there. And that's set on auto, so right off the bat, I'm not real, a real big fan of this auto post flow feature. It seems like it wastes quite a bit of gas. I, If I know exactly what I'm doing, how much amperage I'm going to be running, I'll actually just go in and set my post flow manually because I think I'm going to be wasting quite a bit with this automatic post flow. But we'll just leave it there for now. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to start on 10 amps and I'm going to taper off at 2 and our max is set at 70 and this is 14 gauge 304. So I'm having some issues with uh, my torch setup right now. I'm getting some arc wandering from my tungsten so disregard that. Now you can see the amperage tapering down to about 2 amps. I think we had maybe 14 or so seconds of post flow there. Now I'm going to get into some pulsing. We'll go through a couple different pulse programs here. I'm going to show you about three different pulses. Here's a frequency of about 0.9. So this is good just for keeping your tempo and your rhythm with adding your filler metal. So you can hear the pulsing, it makes kind of a popping sound at this lower frequency. So the, sec the frequency setting on the machine is now at 1000. So you can tell how annoying that is. Um, you're definitely going to be wearing earplugs if you're welding with that setting. And you're probably going to make everybody else in the room have to put earplugs on as well. Now I've switched to the maximum frequency which is 2000. And here we go. So there you can see your ears are definitely going to be bleeding if you're not wearing earplugs. If you, if you can see the difference in the weld here, um, not a huge difference in uh, how the weld's depositing other than that uh, lower frequency. So I, I don't really see the advantage of running a pulse unless you're going to have the frequency set so low just to keep your tempo with depositing your filler metal. So we'll go ahead and move on to some razor blades that I got here. So I've gone through and welded a pair of razor blades already. This first half was without filler, second half was with filler. You can see I started on the razor blades and didn't blow through. Um, I did have some blow through on the end. So I start at 2 amps, end at 2 amps, 
and I actually was welding at a max of 14 amps while I was depositing the filler on this half. I wasn't able to see what I was running at without filler. But we'll go ahead and try another set of these here. Alright, so now I went and put on a different cup because I'm pretty sure I was having arc wander from my tungsten to my cup. So, also loaded up in your tungsten, so hopefully I quit having that arc wandering issue. I went ahead and bumped us up to five starting amps. So we're going to bump our arc start up to about 7. There's probably a reason it's set to 10 from the factory. So I know you're probably thinking this is pretty crazy thin stuff to be welding on, but I've been in enough applications like Formula SAE, I volunteered out there for a couple years, we're welding on this super thin wall tubing on those car frames, so this welder would be awesome to use on that, because I know the square wave just want to get quite low enough to be able to do some of that super thin wall. See, I can barely even see this with my naked eye, so I know you're not going to be able to see this, but I, I was able to weld the tips of the razor blade together just now, and it's already cracking, but you probably can't even see that, but it did weld the very tips of the blades together without any filler. So there you can hear the on-demand fan just kick down and you definitely know when it's on but it's nice and quiet when it shuts off. It immediately kicks on as soon as you establish an arc so it'll sit there and rev up like an engine. But it'll only stay on if you get the unit hot enough so I really like that feature should use less electricity and it'll be quieter when I'm working and I don't want to shut the welder off the other thing I want to talk about is the torches so this is the PTA 17 that came with the square wave 200 this is a PTA 26 that came with the aspect 230 they both have flex heads the big difference besides the size, which there's a massive difference in the size of the handle, and I'll show you the connection on these. Huge difference right there. But the biggest difference, other than the size of the torch itself, is the hose. So the square wave comes with this Ultraflex braided hose and it's super light it's super pliable and flexible the aspect 230 comes with like a radiator hose super hard super stiff super heavy I welded for about two hours with this thing before I started cramping up in my neck and shoulder and I couldn't take the pain anymore so I ripped this thing off and plugged in my square waves ultra flex and I love this thing. What I'm going to probably try to do is 
find a flex hose that I can actually get for this size and plug it into this torch and then see how it does. But the other option is just to go to a water-cooled torch, which they really actually push with the aspect. You can get a one-pack that comes with a water chiller and a water-cooled torch. So that's probably the way to go if you're going to be doing um, extended welding or welding on thicker stuff like thick aluminum especially and when I weld on aluminum here I definitely notice this torch getting really hot and I have to take breaks so it'll probably be something that I look into but for now I'm fine just using this well I know that was a brief overview of the stainless part of welding but hopefully that gives you an idea of what this unit's capable of I actually went ahead off camera and tried some vertical up welding with the pulse turned on and that actually worked fantastic. Um, I'm glad I don't have to do out of position welding like that very often, but the next time I do I'll definitely be utilizing the pulse feature. So that's going to wrap up the stainless steel DC welding side of things with this machine. I'm going to be playing with this here and figuring out the AC waveforms and all the features that this machine has. It's got a lot. It looks like I'll be able to really fine tune every single aluminum welding uh, project that I come up with. So if you're interested in aluminum welding, watch for that video and we'll see you later.